Hi, this is Pratiksha. I've always really liked Sudokus, the ones that come in newspapers, and um, I think I once convinced my dad to buy me a book full of them. Yeah, so anyways, I was thinking, why not try automating them? So, first of all, what is a Sudoku? Basically, it's a grid that you have to fill with numbers from 1 to 9. The twist is though that each number can only occur once in each row, column, and box. I know I used to solve them by using scanning methods or by pairs, but today we're going to discuss how we can solve them smartly by using a computer's intelligence. There are three main algorithms that we're going to be discussing, backtracking, graph coloring, and neural networks. Let's take a look at backtracking. Backtracking is a fairly simple algorithm, mainly because it's really brute force. Basically, what it does is what we call a depth first search. What that means is from the list of all possible values, here 1 to 9, it assigns a number to the first empty box and checks if it's valid. If it's valid, it goes to the next empty box and assigns a number, and so on, basically re recursion. Now at some point of time, there will be a situation when there aren't any valid numbers. That means there has been a wrong value filled somewhere back. See the simulation. Those values are set to 0 and marked in red. They go back to their parent and pick the next valid number and then go forward adjusting the value so on as you can see. Sometimes we have to backtrack a lot to find the best solution. That means one of the major drawbacks of this algorithm is that it can be time taking and not very efficient in calculation. Let's take a look at our next algorithm, graph coloring. A graph is basically a way of representing a set of vertices of what we call nodes and their connections or edges. They can be directed or undirected, though here we'll only be deal dealing with the undirected ones. Now, the idea of graph coloring is that we have to figure out the best way to assign colors to the vertices such that no vertice which is connected has the same color. Let's try and work this out intuitively though, with the graph here. Let's say the first node we color blue. Now node 2 cannot be blue, so we have to assign it maybe red. Node 3 cannot be red or blue, so we have to assign a different color, maybe yellow. Node 4 cannot be red or yellow, so it can be blue or any other color if we have no constraints. So how do we translate this to our Sudoku? Basically, our graph would be something like this. Uh, this is a very simplified view of it though. We would have each node connected to the nodes in its rows and columns too. Okay, so let's take a look at the simulation. Our algorithm will be a simple recursion one and basically implementing backtracking, right? Where we try and assign colors iteratively to the nodes and if there's no color, we go back to the parent node and put the next number. Here, each color is mapped to a number and red for wrong is mapped to zero as you can see. It's doing backtracking. Now, what's the difference between these two algorithms? I would say not much really. They're just different ways of looking at the same solution. Graph coloring is fun for someone who understands visually. Let's take up a different approach altogether. One using deep learning. Now, a neural network is basically a network of neurons similar to nodes in a graph, but in layers. The value of the neuron in the next layer is given by a linear combination of the neurons in the previous layer. They get multiplied by certain weights and summed. Now for a multi-class classification problem, my output would actually be the scores or probabilities of the classes. And my one output is the class of the neuron which scores the highest score. Talking about the exact network structure um, of the neural network isn't in the scope of this video, but our input is a 9 by 9 grid and our output is a 81 by 9 array where each row represents one of the 81 numbers and each column represents the probabilities of the classes that is from 1 to 9. Let's talk about the algorithm. We first predict an array of 81 by 9 numbers and then we classify the 81 numbers into those with the highest probability. We pick one number which has the highest probability value and we fill that in the Sudoku. Then we feed this new Sudoku uh, into a network and so on. We continue this until we have no blank positions. As you can see here, uh, on the right we are training our Sudoku and on the left um, this is its first prediction, the pred value and it's not very accurate. And we've also got the probabilities of those values.
Now our last prediction is fairly accurate and the probabilities of this values have been turned to zero. Now the drawback of this algorithm is that it does have a chance of failing. Whereas our other algorithms, they, maybe they were less cool, but at least they were accurate because they were pretty much brute force. Okay, so let's go into the code. This is the main directory of the code of the Pygame application that I was running. The code is on GitHub and the link is in the description box below. I won't go too much into depth because there's a lot of code. But um, this is main.py. This is the one that we'll be running. It's basically for running the Pygame. Um, as you can see from here, uh, the keys B, G, and N run backtracking, graph coloring, and neural networks respectively. Uh, here, backtrack.py, backtrack it stores the classes grid and cube, which are mainly there for the GUI functions. Uh, we've got graph.py. Uh, this is there for, um, it stores the grid, uh, classes of graphs and nodes and their connections. We've got model.py and these three f folders, model, result, and scripts. That's there for um, storing the model of the neural network. This is a snippet of the code that I showed earlier. We've got solvers.py. This is the main script that I'll be discussing. Um, it stores our algorithms. Uh, yeah, and helpers.py is um, it stores the functions that act as helpers for our solvers. Um, things like, you know, if the value is valid or not, and um, other GUI stuff. This is our main backtracking recursive function. The first thing that we do is we t find the first empty box as a row column pair. Now, if we can't find one, that means we should return true and a Sudoku has been solved. Now, um, then we go and iterate between 1 and 9. Uh, 1 and 10, but you know, like it's Python, so 1 and 9. We check if it's valid uh, for its row column box. And then if it is, we assign it as the box's value. And then we call the function again, like that's recursion, right? Now, if there is no valid number, we return false. And uh, we set it as 0. Uh, we only return false when, um, all n when none of the 9 numbers are valid. And as you can see, that's how the recursion occurs. Uh, the rest of the code is for the GUI. So um, it's for updating the uh, Pygame interface. This is the main graph coloring recursive function. It's pretty similar to the backtracking function if you think about it. Um, basically what we do is we find the first empty box. We iterate from uh, 1 to 9, uh, basically our colors. We check if it's valid, um, is safe to color. And if it is, we set it to that color and we call the function again. And if it isn't, we return false or return nothing. Now, um, again, here, the most of the code is GUI. And because setting the different colors was tough, as you can see, the majority of the code of the connections and all of that is in graph.py. Just, but it's a, it's a nice 300 line code. So I'm not gonna go into explain that right now. So about the deep learning way of solving the Sudoku. Uh, this is feet, which is a copy of the original grid. Uh, the first thing we do in our while loop is that we predict and get our 81 by 9 matrix. If remember 81 was the cells and 9 uh, was um, the probabilities of each of the nine numbers, basically the classification probabilities. So pred is the maximum, uh, pred is the number which has the maximum probability and probability is the um, probability of that number basically and this is basically a 9 by 9 matrix and this is also a 9 by 9 matrix so then what we do um, is that obviously for the given values their probabilities would be 1 so we have to convert them to 0 and then we find the maximum of the remaining we have uh, we find the maximum of the ones remaining and we set that value as true as true and then we input that value into our actual grid. So then in the next loop we have um, this value that we predicted and the original constraints. This while loop it breaks when all the um, values have maximum probability as zero. That would mean um, 
when they all are fixed and we can get this from our mask function. I hope this was a good explanation on the different types of ways and algorithms we can use to solve Sudoku's. To read more you can look at these links.